Hey everyone, Brandon here from Roost. In this video, we're gonna talk about completion handlers and how they can help you get the most out of some of those out of the box automations in Roost. So let's dive in. So I'm gonna jump into the Hello World workflow that we built during the Getting Started series. If you haven't built this workflow yet, what are you doing? Go get that first workflow done. Once you have this set up, you should have a form and a workflow. Now, what we can do here is we can configure a completion handler, which will basically allow us to trigger another workflow when this workflow is complete. Now we call them completion handlers, but you might hear things like workflow listeners or listeners. If you hear that terminology in the coop or while you're talking to someone who's building automations, they're probably talking about a completion handler and it's the same thing. Now, for the purposes of the exercise, I'm gonna be looking at this as a very simple example, but one of the most important things for you to think about when it comes to completion handlers is the fact that this will give you a lot of flexibility with some of those out of the box automations that you might be working with. For example, if you're using the user onboarding workflow, which is a massive workflow, you want some sort of custom output from that workflow. Instead of needing to go in and modifying that entire workflow, which is a beast, you can configure a completion handler to make sure that you're doing something else once it completes. Now, what do I mean by completion? Let's take a look here. So if I open up completion handlers, you'll see there's two options options. There's when this workflow completes, do something, or run this workflow when another one completes. Either way works, but if I were to say I wanted to choose which workflow ran once this completes, I can click add, I can choose a workflow, and then I can trigger on a status. Going back to that use case, if we're thinking about the user onboarding workflow and it fails, and you wanna do something when it fails, you can create a separate workflow that triggers when a failure happens. Or if you want an extra step or extra set of steps done when it completes, you can run a workflow once it succeeds. You can also do it with timeout or cancellation. So this will give you a lot of flexibility when it comes to some of the out of the box crates or automations that you can take advantage of without requiring you to go in, unsync and modify the workflow. You just need to configure the handler and then choose which workflow you want to run based on a certain status. So let's walk through a specific example together. All right, now for this particular example, I'm actually gonna go back to the automation section and create a new simple workflow that I want to trigger after Hello World is done. If you're not familiar with the Hello World automation, the basic automation here is you fill out a form and then it sends an email with the information from the form. So to test out a completion handler, what I can do is I can trigger another email letting me know it's listening. This will help me and you understand that this works at a fundamental level and then you can take some of those more in-depth examples and you can implement this there. All right, so let's take a look. So I'm gonna go back to the automation section here and workflows. And we're gonna create a new workflow and call it something like, I'm listening to Hello World. And click Submit. All right, now for this one, we're just gonna do something very, very simple. All we wanna do is test the completion handler is working. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a send mail action that's going to send another email after the Hello World completes, letting me know that the completion handler is indeed working. So I can do that by coming to core, scrolling down and coming to send mail and pulling that up here. Now, if you'd like to, you can change this, you can modify this. For simplicity's sake, I'm just gonna keep it as the default. Let me move myself out of the way here. That was fun. All right, and I'm gonna come down. I'm gonna use my email. And for the subject title and message, have fun with it. Say whatever you want. So for subject, I can say something like, I'm Frazier. For the title, I'm listening. And for the message, this is a test to make sure the completion handler is listening. All right, so once I'm done with this, I'm gonna go ahead and click publish at the top right and submit. Now here I'm gonna jump back to my hello world and I'm gonna run it by filling out the form and then we should see that we have two emails. So I'm gonna click on automations, workflows. I'm gonna find my hello world workflow. Now before we actually fill out the form here, we need to set up the completion handler. So I can come up here to the little computer screen where it says workflow completion handlers, click on this guy, and I'm gonna stick with the workflows listening for the completion of the Hello World workflow. This just means I am choosing which workflow I want to trigger on completion. So I'm going to find my listening to Hello World test, and then I'm going to trigger on the status succeeded and click submit. 
All right, so I have it set up here so that when this workflow runs, I should see the other one run as well. So let's test it out. I need to go ahead and fill out the form and I can find that in my trigger here. I'm gonna come down where it says the form URL. I'm gonna view the URL and click on this. All right, and for the send message here for hello world, I can say something like, are you listening? And click submit. All right, so I jumped here into my email and here we go. So we have our first hello world. This is a test. Are you listening? So this is what came in through the form. And then right after that, we have the listener that kicked off an extra email saying that it is listening. So what this does for us is it shows us that this works. If I wanted to get interesting with this, I could do different workflows based off of failure or success. And again, for those crates that you're working with, especially something like the new user ad, this could be incredibly helpful for you, whether it's failure or success or whatever you want to trigger off of, you can build an automation that takes that extra step without having to touch the workflow at all. So that's going to do it here for this, guys. I hope this was helpful for you, and we'll see you in the next one.